Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patrick Ajumoko. I am the Executive Secretary, Chief Executive of the Association of Corporate Treasurers of Nigeria. On behalf of the Governing Council and the members of the SETN, I wish to welcome you all to this uh, webinar being hosted by the SETN on the team, the Nigerian Financial Markets in Perspective with focus on current issues, the outlook for the markets and their impacts on corporate treasury function. Um, I know if you have any question or comments, please will appreciate if you kindly type your comment or question in the Q&A box so that uh, during the Q&A session, um, such questions will be taken. At this juncture, I would want to invite uh, the president of the association, Mr. Zeal Akariwe, to kindly make his uh, opening remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick, and welcome everybody. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this webinar. On behalf of the Governing Council and the members of the Association of Corporate Treasurers, we welcome you all to this webinar. And the theme this time is the Nigerian markets the Nigerian financial markets in perspective, with, of course, a, particular, a specific focus on all the COVID-related events that we've seen since the end of the first quarter this year. The evaluation of the Nigerian financial markets uh, at a time like this is of utmost importance, given the significant issues and uncertainties that um, are prevalent in the market. Now, we know that the financial markets in Nigeria have grown significantly over the last uh, decade or two. We have increased number of players and products, um, as well as increased number of market participants. And also, we know that the regulatory authorities that are charged with the responsibilities of seeing these aspects have done a significant amount of work in making sure everything goes properly. However, uh, as of January, in, in a few of the seminars we held early in the year, we, we did say that based on the budget that was released that we expected this year, we used the term VUCA quite a bit, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So we did expect that of 2020. Uh, at the time, nobody envisaged the type of distortions we have that came about because of COVID. Uh, the emergence of COVID, stifled the global economy. It resulted in social isolation within countries, it resulted in closure of borders, the loss of businesses, the loss of employment, industry-wide shutdown, and so many other socioeconomic effects that, are, that we are all aware of. There are other, non other effects that are not directly related to COVID, but are an offshoot of the resultant um, treatment of the COVID issue. Um, we have a lot of things that have happened in the Nigerian financial markets. We have not been left out. We've seen a significant amount of very sudden pressure. We've seen volatility. We've seen a lot of uncertainty. And all these are negatively affecting uh, the performance of a lot of different components within our markets. So on the backdrop of all that today, we are very delighted to have Mr. Bola Onodele, fondly known as Coco. He's speaking today at this webinar to share, one, he has decades of experience in financial services from the 80s, the 90s, everything that's gone on in this market. If there's a history book to be written, it's not going to be complete without mentioning Coco. In fact, without Coco possibly even writing it. So today we're going to get his thoughts around the theme, the Nigerian financial markets in perspective with focus on the current financial markets issues uh, some of the outlooks that he expects and the impact it will have, especially on the corporate treasury function. Uh, finally, I would like to reiterate and call uh, the association and members that there is a significant increase in the need to consider implementing a documented treasury protocol and significant um, uh, thorough processes for effective treasury function, especially in this era where we see that the new normal is in automation. And in, Bill Gates did say that the successful companies of the next decade 
will be the ones that use digital tools to reinvent the way they work. These companies will make decisions quicker, more efficiently, and they will act and they will be in direct touch of their customers in positive ways. Going digital will put a leading edge of the shock wave of change that will shatter the old ways of doing business. On that note, I wish every one of us fruitful discussions and once again welcome to the webinar. Please don't forget your questions should be in the Q&A box and we'll take that once uh, Coco is done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Azil. Um, at this juncture, we would want to go ahead to introduce our guest speaker for today's events. We are delighted to have uh, the person of Mr. Bola Onadele Toto as uh, the guest speaker today. Mr. Bola Onadele Koko is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, FMDQ Group, a financial market infrastructure group with exchange, clearing house, depository, and private market businesses. Prior to this engagement, Mr. Onadele was the president of uh, FDHL, a financial markets and risk management consulting firm he founded in 2001 where he provided business leadership in the empowerment of the Nigerian financial markets. Previously in the banking sector, Mr. Nadele's career spanned across several banks in Nigeria with senior executive roles in treasury and corporate banking and culminated as chief executive officer. As a widely regarded financial markets architect, he serves on the boards of various organizations, including as chairman of Financial Center for Sustainability, Lagos, and a non-executive director and founding member of Enterprise MGR Professional Advocacy Group. He is also a member of the Board of Trustees of the Financial Market Dealers Association. Mr. Onadele is an ardent advocate of gender equality, especially in the workplace and girl child education. It is therefore my pleasure to invite Mr. Bola Onadele Koko to kindly share his thoughts with us today on the financial, Nigerian financial markets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Patrick, you'll be kind enough to share my slides. Do you have my slides? Yes, I have them. And before I start, let me correct um, what Zil said. Zil said Mr. Nadele Coco has been involved with the market since the 80s, 90s. I, I think I, I was in the accountancy school up to 90. So I actually joined banking in 1990. So prior to 1990, I wouldn't say I was part of the financial market deal. So we'll pick it from 1990. Is that okay? okay. 1980, 10. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll soon step aside. Um, let me wait for Patrick to float the slides so we can enjoy this. All right. Let's start. Thank you very much. Apologies for the little delay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been asked to speak on the Nigerian financial markets, and um, this is probably for the few people that uh, we interact. This is probably the most passionate um, thing for me in this world, Nigerian financial markets. The interesting part of it is um, the reflections is meant to be on corporate treasury, and the Association of Corporate Treasurers of Nigeria is also one association that I respect. Um, I, I was part of, I was privileged to be part of those that um, saw the vision of an entity, an association like this. And I'm very encouraged with what you're doing. And I wish you guys um, um, a very successful advocacy period. Uh, at this time in Nigeria. Um, the presentation today will be in five sections. Um, I think it's worth us 
looking at corporate treasury, and you guys are experts more than me in this space. And then we look at the financial markets, we focus on the Nigerian financial markets, and what we consider to be the strategy, how should corporate treasurers position at this point in time. I will share my outlook, what I think, and on this one, I take sole responsibility because most times uh, some of these things do not happen as one um, to reflect on. But I, I see there at times and look at the crystal ball and I think what we'll look at is what we'll see is what I thought of as what will likely occur in Nigeria. But as I, as I said, don't, don't put money on it because we've seen dislocations as Zil mentioned from time to time. And we'll end it with key success factors. What I believe uh, we need to do because at times you can have a great outlook and have great vision, but if you do not uh, put some things in place, you may not achieve your objectives. Next slide, please, Patrick. So the first, Section is corporate treasury, and under corporate treasury, we'll be looking at focus, the responsibilities and requirements. Here, I intend to um, sort of hopefully I'll get your validation that you know what I've put as focus are the things that you corporate treasurers focus on uh, from time to time, and also we'll look at your responsibilities. And the last part of it is the requirements to see what corporate treasurers require of financial markets. And that's where I think um, things will get interesting. Next slide please, Patrick. There are three pillars uh, for the focuses uh, in, in my own understanding. Uh, the first one speaks to funding. The one on the right speaks to liquidity. And the last box there speaks to risk management. So I'm gonna start with the cost uh, for the funding one. Um, a, a treasurer is very much particular about the capital structure. He has to focus on the optimization of the capital structure, the mix of debt with capital and the type of, you know, uh, 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 capital is very important. He also, the treasurer will also look at optimizing cash, the efficiency of cash, how quickly receivables uh, 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 get converted cash of course we know the cycle will start from the input uh, before the pro products are manufactured and then before they're sold before they then become receivables and turn to cash um also distributor financing the credits and and all those important things with working capital and where you have large expenditure my expectation is probably that you will also have some planning for your capital especially if you have to ensure you do not have mismatches. The second part is liquidity. It is of utmost importance for the treasurer to think of freeing up working capital, um, the liquidity contingency, um, zeal spoke to dislocation. Um, so when you're looking at liquidity, you must have contingency plans in place. If you rely only on credits from the banking sector, then these are some of the things we're going to talk about. You need to um, make sure you have alternative sources of uh, uh, funding. And of course, uh, you always want to match your sources and uses of funds. Um, the last pillar is the interesting part, which is your risk management. Um, uh, it starts from the policies of the company. Are we going to be hedging? How are we going to deal with risk? Are we going to transfer risk? Are we going to minimize risk? Uh, what's our tolerance level and all those things. Treasurers have to focus on that. You also must identify areas of risk, think of how to mitigate them. The risk are not only in your liquidity, uh, but you also have to focus on your operational risk. You have to focus on counterparty risk. And we're going to talk about counterparty risk when we uh, start discussing clearing houses and what also FMB is doing to ensure that we de risk counterparty. Uh, risk in the, um, in the in Nigerian market. The last bit there is hedging. Um, you need to hedge your foreign exchange risk. If we haven't learned a lot, if we didn't understand what hedging has been in the past, uh, I, I guess the activities of the last five years, with the crash of the the, the financial the global financial crisis, 
and now the pandemic um, to make all of us have perfect appreciation of derivatives and corporate treasurers more than any other association should be pushing FMDQ uh, 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 to launch the derivatives products as, as quickly as possible because you have to hedge your interest rate risk, you have to hedge your commodity price risk. And for those of you that also make investments in equity, you also have to consider hedging that risk. Uh, uh, these are the three pillars um, for corporate treasury. Um, it's not impossible by the time you start Q&A, those of you that are experts in corporate treasury management, we, we, we may talk about another pillar. But in essence, next slide, Patrick, this will lead us to the responsibilities of corporate treasury. What are the things you, you look out for? In some organizations, the finance manager acts as the CFO, acts as the treasurer. Um, but today, the, 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 the standard is organizations are beginning to see the specialization required of corporate treasury. So again, the governance and policy will be important, and the corporate treasurer is indeed an advisor. Uh, uh, to the CFO, and they work uh, closely. The second uh, responsibility there is debt management. You have to determine your funding needs and also uh, minimize the cost of funding. We all know cost of capital and cost of debt and the importance of debt, which is the KG minus T. You have some tax benefit. Those are the things that the treasurer will also be looking at to ensure that, you know, you, 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 you um, have a very high performance. Investment management, the treasurer has to deal with the money market, you know, ensure you have very good counterparty lines and you maximize profits from all your investments. Risk management, I spoke to that earlier. Um, you have to look at under rates, you have the interest and currencies. Under price, you have commodity and equity. I have to think of hedging, it's too important. In short, if there's anything the association should be doing now, it should be about appreciation and you know education for uh, uh, its members to ensure that they have perfect understanding of risk and how risk can impact their business and the sort of products. And I'm sure Zeal and um, other people who are leading this charge. Under foreign exchange, um, this is of extreme importance. How should we structure it? What sort of uh, timing do we need to? How for our dividend remittances, purchases, what sort of lines uh, uh, do we need to have with our suppliers? And um, I think Nigeria is beginning to understand that um, foreign exchange rates will move from time to time. Uh, the governor of Central Bank had spoken to this, had spoken to the market so many times, uh, he's spoken to stability, he's worked with FMDQ uh, and the Central Bank to, to ensure there's hedging, just to ensure that there's some stability in the market. I will still speak um, to that. Um, cash management is also of utmost importance. Many years back, as you said, when I was in the market, it was very difficult to move money from one account to another, or maybe you sold in a bar. You need to get the cash to Lagos, which is where your central uh, cash management is. But all those things, technology, and I was very glad I sorted that out. I was very glad that Zeal spoke to technology when he uh, opened the session. And you can see where we have placed technologies here. technology here. It's very central to everything you're doing. And I think the association will also hopefully do more in sharing with members the importance of technology and uh, treasury systems, uh, treasury management system. The last bit here to consider is uh, corporate finance. Um, uh, we shouldn't confuse this with um, just money market placement. We need to think of long-term decisions, investment decisions, financing decisions. Uh, you may be in commercial papers today, but um, how do you fund your capex? When do you uh, go to the market to even issue additional shares? Because you know, as a CFO, as a treasurer, you want to issue new shares into the market when the stock market is up. And of course, situations of dividends, you don't want to find yourself borrowing to pay dividends. So these are the responsibilities of corporate treasury and we're hoping that in future, um, opportunities to be corporate treasurers will be, will be exciting for a lot, a lot of people. You don't have to be a chartered accountant to be a treasurer. And that's why 
I'm proud of what you guys are doing to make sure that this area is, uh, uh, is a specialist area. And hopefully someday you guys will also introduce certification. Uh, next slide please, Patrick. So what are the requirements of corporate treasurers? And it's not impossible, you're gonna have a lot more. So we just codified what we think here. Uh, I think you want a market that is liquid, and we're talking of trading liquidity here. You have a lot of participants, a lot of prices you can compare, and you want the volumes to be very high so you can go into the market anytime. You also don't want a situation where whatever you want to buy or sell would impact on the market, excuse me, because that means the market is not very liquid. I think corporate treasurers will want that. They will also want price discovery. It should be very easy to know where the assets of foreign exchange or you know, interest rates are. So they can take decisions. Uh, of course, this is also important for the internal control and audit, and even the external auditors, not only internal auditors of the organizations. It should be possible to ensure that there's integrity in, in the operations of the treasurer. Uh, market access, of course, we do not want anyone to, to be you know, um, excluded from the market. This is a period of financial inclusion. And that's why we've also been preaching that uh, bond market and commercial papers and all those things are not only for PLCs. Private companies should also be able to tap market uh, as a deem fit. Information is of utmost importance. Why is the first three things to be what an FMDQ will be looking at doing information will come from research. FMDQ group, of course, has a role to play on information by putting data up there and some reports, uh, uh, but also the research people will do a lot more, which will not come under the purview of FMDQ exchange or the group. Number five is stability. Any corporate treasurer will like stability, but stability is not what markets give at times. Uh, and the way you may have to buy that stability will come in risk management. So. In the 90s and 80s, as Zil spoke to, things were relatively stable. In natural fact, I think the president or the governor of Central Bank will talk about interest rates at the beginning of the year. And pretty much you may have these same levels at the end of the year. But this was a period before Nigeria and things got deregulated and liberalized. So that's some of stability. You can't remain in that dogma. Um, the stability you want now will be of laws, of policies and regulatory actions. But you can't really get stability in markets because markets, sentiments, we all know a lot of things that, that rule markets. So um, stability is good, but um, expect that these market risk factors, exchange rate, interest rates, equity price, uh, and uh, commodity price, they change all the time. And there's so many factors that affect them. So that makes number six of utmost importance as well. Natural fact, they're all important, but risk management is very important. And the last bit there is technology. In today's world where things are moving fast, you want to be able to do business, transact business with your counterparties, uh, whether on your phone or iPad, but it doesn't stop there. And I hope Zil will speak to this at another session. Risk management, um, when you've taken positions, you need to be able to mark your positions to market. Um, uh, uh, um, and this is where technology comes in for your risk management, for your measurement, identification. And that treasury management system is another big area that I think today's uh, our corporate treasurers uh, would have to really have to focus on. It will also help if management, if this is put before management, so all the organizations start seeing the importance of uh, treasury management systems. And I hope the governing council of this association would ensure uh, uh, the federation of these sort of ideas to all to the top companies in this country. And when we talk again about corporate treasury, we're not speaking to only PLCs. Uh, corporate treasury will be important even for the small companies. Uh, I remember the first time we mentioned this to a deputy governor in Central Bank about this association. The first question she asked, I think that was Dr. Sarah Lally, was if NMPC was a member of this association. I hope uh, the governing council has done a lot of work in getting the membership increased, and I hope you've converted an MPC to be a member of your association. The next slide, Patrick, thank you, is the next section. 
where we now look at financial markets. There are two areas to look at here, um, overview and diagnosis of the market. Um, join me in looking at what has happened since January. Um, and we're gonna, next slide to Patrick, and we're gonna sort of localize things to Nigeria. Um, inflation has remained relatively at that level, and we know where it is today. Um, what we have not spoken to a lot at our sessions has been the S&P FMBQ bond index. Um, I think you need to start looking at that bond index. In January, it opened at 498 level. So today, August, it's at 588 level. So indeed, we've been, we've been encouraging fund managers, we've been encouraging the pension industry to start looking at building portfolios uh, around this index. And this is a very good uh, benchmark uh, measuring performance, which we hope the regulatory agency we, we look at. But indeed, for most people that are investing, you also need to be able to tell your fund managers to deliver this sort of index level to you. But if you've been in this uh, uh, since January, you'd have had a return of 22%. I mean, that's good news on that side. Um, let's go to the other side where we have the r &E FX um, market. In January, it opened at 363. In April, it got to 387. And the central bank has been doing a lot to ensure that uh, as much as possible, this, this exchange rate um, does not run away from everybody and has been doing all it can to, to, to support the market. Not an easy task. Uh, I, I joke with the governor and deputy governors of Central Bank at times to say the job cannot be easy because you want the exchange rate to be stable. You want interest rates to be low, but inflation is high. And some of you just need to imagine yourselves in those rules. But luckily, we're corporate treasurers, so they have to do what they need to do whilst we focus on what we need to focus on. But if you look at 363 to 385 in that market, if you're able to get dollars there, um, there's a 20 naira shift, which is something a corporate treasurer could have avoided. Um, if you find that market uh, tough to access and you've been buying from the parallel market, whether in your retail, in your personal life, for some corporates that had emergency needs or medical, anything that uh, foreign exchange is required for. That, that market has moved from 362 to 465. At a point it went higher and some people were beginning to pray and fast that it wouldn't touch 500. Uh, uh, but it appears that anytime Naira gets close to 500 is when it starts coming down. Hopefully, um, hopefully it will never break that support level. Um, it's at 465 at the moment. Some people rumor that it is lower than that. Um, others um, are sitting on positions they don't want to sell. The central bank um, has promised that it will uh, do a lot in the market to calm everyone's nerves. The central bank, uh, we must all commend, has kept the futures market going, even through this period of pandemic, so people can at least buy a rate hedge, even if they cannot post up the liquidity and then they can arrange themselves. Um, you go to the money market, in January it was about 14%, and that could probably be the open buyback, which is the proxy for the repo market the exchange is working on. Um, in April, it dropped to 2%, and then it's risen to 9% because the market is a bit um, um, short narrow at the moment. Uh, the all share index is the Nigerian stock exchange market, where the index was at 28 in January, dropped to 23 as expected through the pandemic period and is starting to rise again to, and is at 25 level. Crude oil was at 57 in January. Um, I think it dropped as low as 10 when all of us were locked down at home, but I guess we're all watching the screens. Um, but it's gotten back to 44, which is not bad. So even if Naira had traded down in April or March when the crude oil went to 10, by now, we should start seeing appreciation of Naira. So maybe that will happen because 57 in January to 44 is still a lot of money. But what it tells us, the, the, the sentiments um, are really positive. Um, the lower part of that table speaks to the primary market and the secondary market. Um, if you look at this primary market, some corporate treasurers are quickly realizing that they needed to diversify source of financing. And instead of relying on the banking sector, which is highly impacted by monetary policy management, 
uh, central bank will need to do what it needs to do at any time. They've started seeing the importance of moving to the corporate bond and the corporate and the commercial paper market. The corporate bond January to March was 24 and new issues went up to 152. Uh, uh, and the other side, which is probably commercial papers, uh, there's been an increase in the issuance on the commercial papers as well. Uh, the secondary market side is the turnover. Um, T-bills um, dropped, and we all knew that you know the turnover for T-bills on, on the exchange last year was about 72 trillion, but the bifurcation of T-bills and normal bills, we expected that to impact the liquidity. Um, so um, there's still a bit of T-bills in the market, and the turnover in between May and August was actually like three times that of January to April. FGM bonds um, um, not doing good. Um, our near FX window, we of course know that that market uh, is very short liquidity at the moment, but hopefully things will get better as the central bank has now commenced clearing the backlog. So that is the world and the challenges the corporate treasurer would have been dealing with from January to August. Um, but I don't know if we, financial markets, have given them all the products they can use to hedge. Let's go to the next slide, which speaks to the diagnosis of the market. And here, um, what my team has done to support us is to just put this uh, uh, in three boxes because there are, there, are, there are a lot of things to do with it. Here, that we have a lot. There's a lot here. Um, um, under the FX market, the first one, there's the issue of liquidity, um, pricing, volatility, regulation, hedging. Those are the things you deal with here. And we can talk about this uh, since the 90s. What had happened to liquidity in the FX market? It started by being short, and then we introduced the two-way code in the market, the banking sector, liquidity improved um, under the uh, administration of President or Passenger. The market was open, foreign portfolio investors came in. The market became very liquid. And up to 2014, 2015, um, I think the market was very liquid. I was in one dealing room one day. I think I visited Sam Ochoa in Stambik, IBGC, or maybe it was Stambik then. And I had yours, 30. And I asked him, what did you mean by yours, 30? I had to hear them from the beginning. And he said, oh, they just gave a price for $30 million. And he go. I mean, that was wonderful. And that's the sort of market a corporate treasurer would love. At our own time, when we started early 90s, we were giving quotes for $100,000. But that's the way, that's the sort of projection you want the market to, to have. But at times, you have dislocations, and this dislocation came in 2015. We were actually uh, almost celebrating with one of your the governing council members, uh, Ms. Shekoni, who is, who is one of my colleagues. We were already tracking. $1 billion to be traded in one day in the Nigerian FX market. We are going into 900 before the dislocation of the global financial crisis and could uh, uh, then came. And um, in actual fact, during the global financial crisis, the market was still trading. It was interesting because the best thing to do is to keep market active during crisis. I think it was the crude oil crisis of 2014, 2015 that dealt a big blow to that FX market and the liquidity started draining uh, and, and again, it is an area that with central bank we're going to work on to, to, to drum it up again. And it's possible. Uh, so today, price discovery has been challenging. So there's a lot of work to do in the FX market. And again, that is what exchanges are set up for. Uh, and the central bank is also supporting it every day. The regulation there can be streamlined. Uh, and there's a lot of work to do there as well. It should be very easy and codified for the corporate treasurer to think of an item and be able to see all the rules instead of us having the great grandfather, grandfather, father, and son of regulations. If I pick dividend remittance, it should just be a single page on, 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 on a digitized uh, uh, platform for that matter. And I think Zeal and I had, um, had discussions on this. Um, hedging is very important in that market and, and one that can bring liquidity with it that would be great. If you go to the other market, um, which is money market. The yield curve is just a point at the moment. It's just um, overnight. We need to improve on that. So um, uh, uh, the exchange led by Tumish Koni and our colleagues, Jumoke, you know, Lani, and they're working out with the 
financial markets, dealers, association, and everyone how to improve on the yield curve. And they have a repo project going on, which are doing with the clearinghouse. Uh, the fixing needs to be liquid. If you're going to build on derivatives, your fixing would have to be liquid. You can't have just overnight fixing liquid. Um, commercial papers and promissory notes, they, they are seen as two markets because uh, commercial papers, central bank has said, if banks are going to be part of it, it must be quoted on the on FMBQ, on the securities exchange. Uh, but, you know, we have the promissory notes. Private companies also can tap short end of the market. And that's why the FMDQ private markets has been set up. And if the banks are not involved, then you can use that platform. If the bank is involved for any role, then you have to put it on the commercial paper market in exchange. The repo market is important. It's not yet developed. So here we didn't want to start putting the percentage success. We all know that there are challenges in this area. Um, the last... Um, uh, cylinder there is um, the bond market. Again, you will see here, they've noted public and private. Um, you know, the whole corporate bond market in Nigeria is one trillion naira. That is just too low for an economy like this. And we know that the private companies are also pushing out, looking for capital. But we have to make it easy for them because that, that sector is big. So we need to organize the private private capital and that's, as I said, FMDQ private markets were set up. Private companies also want to borrow, and they want to borrow uh, 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 for uh, duration longer than their promissory notes. You, you can just think back two years, three years before MTM became a public company and became listed. It was a private company, you know, um, Econet and all these great companies. They're private companies, and they should be able to tap the market. And the PFAs, but I've bought their papers because it's not about whether you're PLC or private, but it's about the governance, it's about your business, the cash flow, and the ability to pay back. And that's what my great colleagues in a um, private market, Oye uh, Owoka um, and Yemi Oshinobi, Oyinda, they're working on to drive that market. And they've been working on with some of you in the market, especially the investment bankers, to start that market. Just think back, how was GTB created? How was Zenith created? How, how did Mr. Peterson create RBTC? They use private capital. As we grow, this was all this we did 30 years ago. It should be easier for new generation Nigerians to be able to tap private capital, know where to go, how to access, and what they need to do. Some of us will watch uh, uh, Dragon's Net, uh, Dragon's Net, and you know you you need to enjoy so, that sort of platform and for us to formalize it to where Nigerians young Nigerians can bring their ideas and investors uh, uh, um, are there waiting to support them. I, I watched an interview of Mr. Fola Adiola and it was brilliant. And there are people like that waiting and asking you bring ideas and let's see how to support you. It's not about wealth creation for them anymore. It's how they can empower the next generation of Nigerians. Uh, uh, the benchmarks have to be to be solid, there, has, there would have to be benchmarks in the capital market. This is an area the capital market needs to work on. And then um, hedging this is very important. We need to be able to hedge. In short, when you buy equity, you need to buy a put because things can go down. You need to buy bonds. You're betting against inflation, so you need to buy bond futures. And some of these things um, are what I said FMDT exchange is working on. Uh, commodities, um, we have FX working on that market and we wish them all the best, they're doing a lot. And we're willing to collaborate with them to, to, to sort of straddle that market. The commodities market is so important to this country. You, you need to listen to Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, and what he said about agriculture and the future of Africa. And again, the central bank governor has spoken a lot about agriculture. This government has done a lot. So, I mean, when people ask me at times, Coco, what do you want to do when you're done? I tell them agriculture has to be part of it because it's just the future of um, this country and it's the future of Africa. Um, but we need capital and private capital will support that. Let's go to strategy part. On, on the strategy, we're gonna now see how, what I've said earlier, corporate treasury, the responsibility, we've looked at the markets in Nigeria, and then we see how these changes, um, what impact are they going to have on, the, on corporate treasury? And then, um, the big conclusion from my technical assistant, Dela, is that there's a big case for derivatives now. 
I mean, we just need to, and when we talk about derivatives, please, we're talking of hedging, just providing the plain vanilla um, um, risk management support to you corporate treasurer, because all the things you're dealing with, if you're not, if you don't tie this uh, uh, loose end carefully, all the profits and you know investments your companies make in other areas will be lost because currency can move from one area you know, anytime I'm privileged to sit with Mr. Mefele, he's so concerned about the exchange rate and the impact on companies and Nigerians. But at times, you know, there's a limit to what, you know, he can just do. If crude oil collapsed to nine single digits, they're going to struggle. It's just the fact of life. So you need to insulate yourself. We buy cars, we insure, we build houses, we buy things, we insure. Even our lives, we insure these days. So you need to insure your businesses against market risk. And that's what we're dealing with. And that's why I'm very proud of this association. Um, the next slide, Patrick, let, let us look at these market risk factors and take them one after the other. Interest rate. Uh, under interest rate, we're going to look at the money market and also look at the capital market side of it, which is born. Um, for the investor today, um, it's not good for the investor because rates have, have gone down. But I guess the issuers are happy and, the, and what we're preaching is telling everybody, quickly put your program together with the exchange or the private market platform. So anytime you need to tap, you just quickly come to the market. The exchange have, has made this so seamless now that you don't even, once you have your program approved by the board of FMDT, the next thing, once you want to go to the market, is to just notify you go to the market because rates are very volatile. And once you see the opportunity, I remember for years my colleague and I, um, to me, when we we're chasing Dangote and MTN, each time we went to the offices to talk about commercial papers. And it took us about four or five years to get them on it because investment bankers were also talking to them. I mean, Alaji Dangote told us, get single digits when you come to the market. And we told him, launch the program and then you come to the market. We're very excited that Dangote, you know, has taken the lead, has shown everyone, MTN has joined the importance of having alternative So uh, Dangote to us today will be the largest um, commercial paper issue on the market, supported by some of the leading investment banking firms here. Uh, uh, MTN is also been to the market, I think, uh, on the commercial paper side. Uh, things are going well. The market went down to zero and we built it to programs uh, close to three trillion now and it should continue to go. But we do not want to exclude private companies from that market. So private companies also need to tap the short end of the market and there they will use promissory notes. Uh, those are buying at the moment. The, the rates are below inflation, but we tell people short end, you can't really be talking of inflation because that is cash management. So the issuers are excited, they're happy, they're working away with very low rates. Some of them that have issued on, um, on FMDQ, uh, our colleagues in marketing have showcased the benchmark banner, the check business day every day. Um, um, Kodil Goji, uh, leading Uzra, Maka, Teju and Co. have ensured that there's a bit of visibility to, to all this. And they're beginning to build benchmarks for different industries. You see Accela for gas, you see Dangote for manufacturing, you see MTN for, 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 for telecoms, and it's going to grow like that. And it makes it easy for others in their industries to, to come to the market and benchmark. Uh, at the moment, the repo market they are working on, we have OBB, which is not but hey, Nigeria has the Kama, uh, the, the new one, 2020, netting uh, 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 provision is in there. Uh, there's ring fencing of the collaterals for financial contracts. Um, all of us need to celebrate this administration and the president for signing every morning. Um, I, I'm, I'm, anytime I have the opportunity, I send a message to Jumal Keldi Wale, um, the office of the vice president. Those are work to ensure and all the lawyers in the market. And for once, with that camera, I could see the ecosystem of market. Investment bankers, lawyers all came together. Corporate treasurers. We cannot... Um, they sort of estimate the importance of what the president has done by signing that bill into an act. We've been telling people once we have that karma, we will provide employment in this country for in financial markets more than one million jobs in financial markets. 
and also that will bring capital to Nigeria, not just uh, cash coming into Nigeria and finance, but people, people that have worked abroad and will be returning to work in clearing houses. And of course, it is not news to you that FMDQ clear, the clearing house we have is um, working out to get registered by the Securities and Exchange Commission as a uh, CCP central counterparty to ensure we de risk counterparty risk in this country. That charge is being led by, by my colleague, um, Ion Hong. So, on the bond market, um, the investors, uh, it's not a good time for investors, uh, whether it's FGN or or I, I checked the FGN 10 years, less than inflation, that's not good. Uh, the reason why I check is I'm checking for pension and I hope you guys are checking for your own pension as well. So if you're an issuer today and you're happy, you're getting low rates, issuing into the country, know that bonds into the country, know that your pensions are being put in this red zone, corporate bonds, suko. Um, it's great for infrastructure bonds, um, you know, as if we can quickly get into market oriented, sort of economy where roads and rails are commercialized, this is a good time to tap the market. Let's go to the other markets, FX market, the buyers and sellers. I beat in red because the market is not extremely liquid. The sellers will always want high rates, but they can't even get it. Um, the futures is green. They're, they're able to buy futures. Some are able to get forward. So for me, the forwards would be a bit of green with a shade of red. It's not a very liquid market at the moment. Commodity price, not so good on both sides for buyer and seller at the moment. Um, the buyers, maybe, maybe they will have a bit of green there because they, some, some, some uh, commodities are low in price. Some gold is going up, so it's a, it's a mixed bag there. Uh, equity price, again, depending on whether you are an existing investor or you're a new investor. Excuse me, because if you're an existing investor, you don't want the prices to go down. And you have a combination in mutual funds where, you know, you put the portfolio together, you can have a bit of bond, a bit of equity, and a bit of money market. And it looks like it's green for those that are investors. The next slide. Um, the next slide, pretty much great job done here, is um, what direction and at what point, what do you need to do? I mean, on the last column, we have all the different derivative products that we have to bring to the market your association, FMD, FMDQ, consultants, we have to invest in our own generation this derivatives market because we need to ensure corporate treasurers can hedge at any time. So depending on the direction, whatever you are, if you're an investor, or buyer, seller, or issuer, uh, things affect you. The directions are very different at times, especially if you look at equity. A drop in equity price could be good if I'm coming in. And the stock I know is a great stock, but for you, an existing, um, but that's not uh, the issue here. An existing investor, you may not like it. The last column is the most important column here. These are the different ways that you can hedge. Um, and these are, um, there's, there's a lot of work for the exchange and the market. And I, and I think uh, this generation has to deliver this. The next slide is Outlook. Um, just to share with you what I think. I think we're going to continue to have challenging markets um, because we have uh, uh, a president that thinks of Nigerians so much and doesn't want, he even he agonized over the electricity tariffs, which is great because it's the only way capital can come into the star sector. But the president thinks of prosperity and thinks of the Nigerians, not those of you that are extremely wealthy, but the impact all these decisions we have uh, on those that are down the ladder. But what I encourage uh, at times is let us, let us free the market, let the capitalists bring capital and things, and the CSR and the wealth they create, and even at times market itself will bring prices low for, 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 for the other people. But if we look at them alone in isolation and capital doesn't come in, they, they will suffer uh, uh, as more. So, but I think we'll keep having that challenging markets for some time until they decide to bite the bullet. And I guess they will encourage and plead with every Nigerian to invest and take this pain for, for a gain that we'll see in the future. I think we'll see the central counterparty, uh, counterparties emerge. Um, please, um, my colleague that did this, you just put what CCP represents and it should know later. 
Um, and this is where you, even corporate treasurer, when you do business with a bank and you have derivatives, you want to be sure that you're ahead. You want to be sure your deal uh, is being put on the CCP so you're not taking the risk of a bank. That is how the OTCFX features today has been designed when my colleagues designed that architecture, such that if anything happens to the bank, your margins and your contracts will move to, to another market. Look, all in all, we may say that market is not at 9 over 10 today, but I think we've done some, some, some decent work in what has happened so far. I think the relevance of debt capital market will increase, uh, even up to 2023. Uh, I think the focus on private market, private companies have to start demanding that they too should be able to attract, and some of them already do, investments from the pension market because the, the pension assets need to look for the best opportunities uh, for your pension and my pension. Mine is narrow the short duration now. But as some young Nigerians are just joining, you, you know, this pension scheme, and we have to ensure that they are happy with it and they must be able to tap all the opportunities available in the market. So we keep encouraging the pension regulator to let everybody know that as long as the private uh, securities are, are on an organized platform like FMDQ, uh, the sky is the limit, the PFA should be able to invest. Some, some provisions of their, uh, of their investment guidelines already permitted. But at times people want clarity. Um, I'll go to 2024 to 2027. Uh, we, we can have a bit of action here because we're going to have a new president and Mr. Mefele may go on record as the first governor to actually serve three different presidents because he, his tenure will go as far as 2024. But I think by then, we're going to see a lot more private sector would have taken over almost everything in this country. And it's important we have that sort of economy. Um, Whichever sector you can think of, private sector will become important. You just need to go and read the, the treaties of Mr. Mefele, April 15, which was turning COVID tragedy into opportunity. And you will see what I'm saying. Almost every sector, the central bank is willing to lead the banking sector. And we've told them to include the debt capital market in, in, in changing the face of this country. And it's possible. All of us must be ready for it. Um, by then, it is not even about relevance of debt capital market. Uh, you can imagine the Infraco, uh, which, um, and I'm sure you must have heard about Infraco PLC, a structure company uh, that they're, they're putting together. Uh, I'm pleased that the Deputy Governor Economic Policy leading that charge is the group chairman of FMDQ Group. And, um, and that, from day one, his vision is we can make that big in Nigeria. That's going to be a 15 trillion uh, uh, company. And it's not going to stop that, but that's the first vision they see. And we can get this thing 15 trillion, put a lot of uh, equity capital close to 1.5 trillion and then leverage 10 times. And we can fix Nigeria for, from all these things. Um, by then, the, the size of the market from uh, um, um, Infraco alone could be bigger than, than the federal government bonds. But there's something that can be bigger, that can even give us bigger debt capital market than even in fact, and we're gonna get that very soon. I, I see consolidation of markets, um, and you can interpret that as you want. I'm not gonna say more than that. I see consolidation of markets. I see maturity of private capital. At times we see that here and read Lazard, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they all have private capital businesses, big time. We see that in Nigerian investment banks also setting up their private capital debts today. The last one, which I've added some Latin phrase for you, is the independence of markets. I think by 2024, um, Mr. Emefele will lead this market back to uh, the sort of markets all of you used to enjoy. Two way codes, I see it coming back around that time. And that is where I ended that with a separate passion, which in Latin means passion rules. All of you will still enjoy the market. The last bit there, those arrows follow me, and my colleague is going to put something on it when you get the reverse slide, is ACTN. I've started seeing the significance of ACTN. I've started seeing all the work uh, and the transfer from Ishmael, the work coach of MTN, the treasurer to Zeal, the governing council, the great work they're all doing. You can see, I think this is going to be a formidable advocacy platform in this country, and I wish you all the best. 
I have joined as an individual member, and I think you need to get all past bank treasurers to join for all of us to submit, su support this formidable group. If you think about every company as a corporate treasury, so the association of corporate treasurers, that we even study public sector, the finance commissioner of Lagos State is the treasurer of Lagos State. All finance commissioners, they need to join this association. That is the vision I see for this association. Or, or let me say what I saw on 12-12-12, December 12, 2012, where we launched this association. The last slide is key success factors. Um, I've talked about what I see, the crystal ball. But there's a lot to do for this to happen. So this last slide speaks to, and some of you could have heard me speak to this, and I'm not going to over-repeat it. Um, we need to codify our philosophy on markets in this country, on businesses. The, 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 the commerce is the bloodline of any country. Bloodline. It's commerce. So how do we want commerce to work? How do we want agriculture to work? How do we want housing to work? So when I spoke to some area that can also bring 40 trillion in debt capital markets, it's about housing. We, we need to have a housing revolution in this country, supported by central bank. Central bank is already supporting the insurance, uh, uh, mortgage insurance, the World Bank and everybody. Uh, Suku can support housing. Uh, uh, my colleagues are working on the blueprint. Uh, Adaze is led, leading that team now. Uh, 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 to ensure that we submit a housing blueprint, they're working on consultants, to ensure we codify. We, we just need to make sure that seven out of 10 Nigerians need their own homes. We need a strategy like that. If we do that in this country and we fix infrastructure within FRACO, um, um, my, my chairman, the, 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 you know, Dr. Obira is always telling me 15 trillion is small. Uh, we in FMDQ have thought housing revolution can pull 40 trillion. But I sit down with Mr. Balogun, with the Bolaji Balogun, the debt capital market uh, development uh, uh, 2025, the project, tells me 100 trillion. I mean, it just looks like this economy is going to be great. But we have to do things across the economy. Then the market itself, we need huge transformation up to how we run all our markets. And then the market access, we must make it all inclusive for everyone. And all of us have to work hard. ACTA, Asian Houses Association, Financial Markets Dealers Association, the regulators. This is a time that Nigeria has to chase prosperity for the country and for Nigerians. We need to have a lot of work. So philosophy will matter. Leadership is going to be of utmost significance because you can't deviate from that philosophy. And once we have that philosophy, the architecture, the regulations coming up must all support it. And I keep saying it, and I wish you could see my desk, and at times I say that's how clean. There should be nothing on the president's desk except jobs. When you come to talk to him, how many jobs will be created? From the private sector, not, not public sector. You know, we all know the challenges of the finance. Um, thank you very much. ACTN for inviting me to speak to you this morning. I know time um, is a constraint all the time, but you know I, I see the work you're doing. We are willing to collaborate with you uh, to empower the markets um, for economic progress towards you know delivering prosperity to Nigerians and Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nadele. That was very insightful and expository. Um, right now, we are going to enter into the question and answer session. And uh, the person to answer that session is uh, our dear president, the president of the Commission of Corporate Treasures of Nigeria, Mr. Zil Akariwe. So I wish to invite Mr. Akariwe to kindly um, anchor the question and answer session. Thank you. OK, great. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, I, I'm just please, everybody that's on the call, if you have questions you want to ask Coco, uh, put them in the question and answer box, and I uh, will take it from there. I mean, but before we start getting a lot of questions, there's some things that Coco said that I would like to reiterate and emphasize on, especially as it relates to risk management. I think the 
the job of the corporate treasurer is evolving rapidly and the, the issue of risk management is now significantly more important and more pertinent to the treasury environment than it has been in a while. And something I've advocated for a while is the fact that for you to adequately and efficient manage risk, you must first be able to isolate it. You must be able to monitor it. You must be able to measure it. Um, it's very difficult to do any of that without having a system that puts all the risks in a bucket that you can then isolate and measure. And without a treasury management system, without the use of technology, it becomes increasingly more difficult. And you would notice that a lot of the, developing, the developed countries where risk management is a core and integral part of the business, you find that the regulators that measure these risks that are being run, the systemic risks, are not doing it by paper. They have systems that are interfacing with systems. And so the systems speak. And something that we haven't seemed to appreciate yet is the fact that once you have systems in place and systems that talk to systems, it relieves the treasurer of a lot of day-to-day -day tasks because it just highlights, I mean, a lot of us have ERPs that do your auto reconciliation with your bank account. I remember when I started banking, those things didn't exist. Reconciliation was a manual process of hundreds of pages of paper. Now it's done, some companies do it on a daily basis because the systems speak to each other and it just highlights any exceptions for the treasurers to have a look at. So going forward, I think technology, the use of treasury management systems that interface with the systems of the banks would make the treasury function significantly more efficient and lighten the load of the treasurer to be able to do more strategic stuff. Um, something else Coco said that I found very intriguing is that in tapping private capital, the likes of IBTC and all the others did so 30 years ago. And you would expect that after 30 years of doing something, it should be significantly easier, more rampant and more efficient now. And if it is not, then there's something we all have to do to go back to the drawing board to make sure that in another five, 10 years from now, whatever we're doing now has to be more efficient in five years, has to be more productive and has to be easier. Um, I was speaking to someone a few days ago and he said that he was going through some old files where he works, in the bank he works, and he found deal slips from the mid nineties of forward rate agreements that were executed. You know, Coco is nodding. <laughs> I'm sure his signature will be on a few of those. You know, it's amazing that in the nineties, without systems, without all the technology we have today, without the products of today, we had treasurers executing forward rate agreements, things that are highly needed today, but the discussions were not even at the level where we can have those kind of discussions in order to talk about structuring or managing those risks. And this is something I'm hoping that the association were going to be very aggressive on creating an education platform, hopefully with FMDQ to raise the standards within the industry so that these, these discussions become significantly more uh, rampant. So, to questions now, Coco, we're going to the questions. We have two questions. Uh, someone that's anonymous is asking if you have any concerns with the growing commercial paper market and the issuance by some borrowers. What I imagine is, do you have any concerns? Do you think it's growing too fast? Do you think commercial papers are secure enough to protect investors from the risks of default, especially if there are more and more uh, issuers that are not as well structured as the others? What's your take, Coco? Um, I'm not concerned. I think we should understand the process. Um, prior to 2009, maybe the banking system used commercial papers for different things. And I think that was the fumigation that took place where um, the central bank and NGIC saw that the, the bank had not used commercial paper as well. It was used to, 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 to it was not used in the right, the right way. Let, let's say that. This is 2009, it's a long time. The central bank then, issued guidelines on how commercial papers and bankers' acceptances should work. And we have not even talked about bankers' acceptances. That's another uh, story. 
And immediately the guidelines came out, you must get rated, you must do these things, should be well done, there has to be depository for it. The market went to zero. And luckily, FMDQ in 2013 was launched onto the system, the ecosystem, and we started, we went to Central Bank, and we said, we respect the guidelines, but we'd like to add some things to it. And they said, what? Well, and we wrote to them and told them, your intention was not to drive commercial paper market to zero. Your intention was to have a credible market. Yes or no? The answer was yes. Good. So to make it credible, we're going to do the following. This will be the processes. This will be how securities will be registered. All the things you want done, we're going to comply. In the first place, you know, commercial paper shouldn't have been where central bank will be giving rules. But that was where central bank found itself because commercial paper is used to intermediate banks. It sits in the world of investment banks. And that's how the likes of Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan grew many years back. But hey, we have this situation. So, so we brought it to the exchange and we ensure that there's high visibility. We put it, as you said, zeal, not paper. If you issue commercial paper now, it's on FMDQ website. When you pay, it's put on FMDQ website, updated to say you, it's matured, you pay. If you roll over, no, you can't even say if you roll over. If you want to roll over, the investors have to agree. You can't impose rollover on them. So if you say, I want to roll over, and they say, no, we do not want rollover, we want our money, you have to pay. If you don't pay, there's a difference. If you look at the architecture of commercial paper today on FMDQ exchange, uh, that question you can ask investment bankers and also the issuers, they will tell you this is one of the best things that have been put into the market. Um, you, you, you can update, you can do this, things have been made easy. The investors, it is not the exchange that will ensure that people get paid. We, we've done the right things to be able to provide information. The investors have to always decide if they want to buy a paper or not. They have to make that call. They can read the rating report, but they can also make their own assessment. Um, but you know what? When we have derivatives, some people will bring credit default swap. You buy a commercial paper and you buy a derivative on a swap on the likely default of that company. That's why the derivative is just too important. Nobody knows the company that will go bust in three years time or two years time. But you just as corporate treasurer must hedge yourself. So FMDQ has given a highly credible commercial paper, paper market. I'm not concerned. I don't think the insurance level we have in the country, three, three trillion program is high enough. I mean, look at Nigeria, how can it be three trillion program? Outstanding is not even three trillion for all the economies. So for, for all the sectors in this country. So I want to hear big figures. And I mean, I'll be happy when I retire, when I hear big figures. I want to be at home reading newspapers, you know, watching my plants, obviously, you know, seeing the tractors and reading news about what is going on. This is a small amount. I'm not worried. As long as the governors, the market has put there, everyone respects it. And anyone that market conduct does what is not right, the market will deal with it. So at times, you know, FMDQ, in as much as we like to develop the market, we also take our self-regulatory responsibilities seriously. And, uh, you know, at, at times, you know, the, um, the, the people that bring business are the same people we have to say, well, you didn't do this and you have to pay this one. And quite honestly, we do it well here. Okay, but it's for market conduct, it's for the market, you know, governance, it's for the integrity of the market. And that's very important to us. So I, I'm not worried. Can anyone have a default? Yes. Have we had any defaults since we started? No. You can go on the website. We have the, you know, commercial paper credit status. You see all the people that have issued. The sponsors that brought them are members, registration members that sponsored them on the platform. No single default. So we're going to do the same thing for private companies on the you know, private markets platform. But I'm not saying there can never be a default. What I'm saying is the derivatives experts will offer you credit default swap someday if you think that this company may default. Buy the swap. And you will see it in the prices of the swap. And it's telling you the likelihood of default. That's how market runs. 
you don't build the market by closing the market. You open the market and encourage all the other things around the market to grow. That is where Nigeria has found itself, and that's how we're going to grow this economy. Okay. I, I think I tend to agree largely with everything you've said, Coco. But speaking about growing the economy, especially as we delve into the areas of uh, derivatives, there's no question, but I have a question on this. Now, with the legislation, with the CAMA now passed, I mean, it's not yet been gazetted, but we assume that it's just a matter of process. Um, is will FMDQ be problems. more aggressive in providing derivative instruments? Because the, one of the key drawbacks we've had in the market regarding derivatives was the fact that there was no net netting legislation. Now we have that. That box has been ticked. So regarding regulation of products, will FMDQ be more aggressive in producing more products or working with people to get more products? Okay. FMDQ can put all the products it likes on the exchange. FMDQ will not be the one to trade it. So the question, I will say the project, FMDQ had anticipated karma and we were doing all the work Excuse me. The work started with the clearing house. So as at last year, the board of FMDQ increased the capital of the clearing house to five billion and also decided that every every PAT after tax retained earnings of that company should go into a default resolution reserve so as to build capacity to de-risk this market. Let nobody be abroad or anywhere and say, I'm worried about counterparty risk. That was the mandate the board gave us. So in FMDQ clear today, in case you're looking at oh, if they have CCPs, where am I going to do business? We have 11 billion to take care of any default. That is apart from the margins that the counterparties will put on. Let's go to the exchange. They're just telling you what the company have been doing. So we never stopped, we were anticipating it and praying that President Buhari will go in history as the person that will sign it. And I used to joke with my colleagues, if Buhari signs that thing, he's my best president. Then they'll say, hey, but you love pension. Then I say, okay, passenger was my president. Then they say, you love the regulation. I say, okay, I love Bapangida. And that's what presidents are meant to do. They're meant to empower the economies and let private sector do the job. So every, every, every 10 years as a president that I know, okay, that's fine. But he signed that, we anticipated it. We've been working with the markets on we need to put the system, we need to do derivative rules. My colleagues work every day and night, all the rules are ready. They were exposed to the market. It's going to the Securities and Exchange Commission soon. When they approve the products, we'll start with bond futures, interest rate, but zero, which uh, uh, benchmark, which fixing are we going to use for interest rate? NIBO is overnight. So FMDA, the interbank market, they have a big role. Corporates, we, we all have to see them. So bond futures, they can because that is trading. But there's so many things we need to do. Some of them are not for FMDQ. But with FMDQ launch, have everything ready, the work is ongoing. We may miss this year. It's looking like that because of systems. But you cannot imagine the work and the pressure of work going on here. On all the rules, the board, you should see the number of pages. The market has read them. Some of you contributed. Thank, thank you for doing that. But there's a lot of work going on. So in terms of regulation, they, they worked out on that. We're going to wait on the SEC. We pray the SEC will quickly approve it, but they have to do their work and send it back. Then we have rules. Then we need systems. Then we need the people. Look, are the banks going to give you the... If we said it's bond future, nobody gives a code for the bond future. It's not FMDQ at that point. You can't come to the exchange and you say, so what you said earlier, Zio, ACTN and FMDQ giving a position, sensitization. If you submit a good program, President ACTN, FMDQ will support you on how to disseminate this and help people understand. Organize your clusters, you know, fast moving goods. Uh, telecoms who we'll go with you and you don't need us you guys are the experts but we'll, we'll give you that platform that's what we're set up to do the directors of this company when we started told us 
focus on market development. Don't talk about dividends because this country has a lot of work to do. And that's the situation we found ourselves. So we've never paid dividends. We keep flying back to develop the market. Someday dividends will be paid. But don't pay dividends when you have a clearinghouse to develop. Don't pay dividends when you need to build a world-class depository. If we have all these debt securities issues, you need them in a depository that is, you know, that has umbilical cord with the exchange integrated. That's what we built. You have the exchange, you have the clearinghouse and depository. You touch the exchange, everything gets done within the same system, within the same entity. Some okay. people cannot imagine what has been presented to them by the banking system, who are the owners of the FMG. But it's in preparation for 2023, 2024, the sort of market we're going to see here. And all this work, so, so for me, FMDQ is doing a lot and it's been supported by people like you. Uh, but, you know, FMDQ has to rely on systems. You have to buy systems. You have to test it, all those things. So uh, derivatives I see coming on stream 2021 when FMDQ see it's there. You know, Gwari can build the road from here to, to Bono, my degree now. Will there be cars driving there from Lagos? You people may not go. But I'm hoping they will go. And to your point, sensitization is key. And once the corporate, once we can get that demand from corporates, once the corporate treasurers know they have issues, they have a demand, the banks will react. So it may be more of the buyers pulling this market out to say, uh, to that question on CP, the man says, I, bought, I want to buy CP, but I'm afraid that uh, it may not be, if it's not a guaranteed CP, that uh, I'm taking credit, it's what can I do? That is business view. That is business. Someone needs to think in the banking sector and offer a credit default swap. But Nigerians shouldn't come with, I want insurance, I don't want to pay. That is where things do not align. <laughs> People say, oh, I want it, but I don't, must I pay for it? You have to pay. I pay for my car insurance and I don't miss it. I have to pay. But once I pay, so what we're selling to them is insurance. And I think um, FMDQ is willing to work with ACTA, but we like structure, structure, structure program, not phone call. We want to do this, come and support. Uh, the board doesn't like okay. it. Okay, thank you. I like the blank check you dropped, and you know I will draw it. I will draw it multiple blank times. Blank check subject to board approval. Blank, no problem, we will draw it. So from what you said, I think the next question is a natural. Someone's asking, or Nome is asking, um, when will we see derivatives and the likes available to retail investors? Do you have any plans to bring derivatives to the retail segment? Do you okay. advise it? Let's Again, no, no, no. I, I have no issues. When we're in banking system, we had what we call, when I was in banking, we had what we call client suitability. So it is not FMDQ that will bring, that will Federate it to retail. FMDQ is a platform that will be dealing members, right? Derivatives dealing trading members. They are the ones that will sell to their clients. When they go to these members, if the member cannot vouch for that retail investor, that the retail investor understands, they may not sell. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to the farm now and sell to a 78 year old farmer. Uh, a derivative. Then the man gets to court, says he can't pay. The judge will ask Baba, say, I don't know what the man sold to me. Why do you want to put yourself? You must answer that suitability. And some fund managers will see that retail may not understand. They will package your investment and let you know that some of the monies will be used to buy hedges. So don't try as a retail investor to try and do everything on your own. Fund managers will, 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 will start putting structures together and they'll say part of the money will be used to buy hedges. Then you're already in the market, but some of you will want to trade and the market will get to that. The bank, look, um, some years ago, retail wanted to buy, you have to go to the bank to buy TVs and bonds. Then some three great guys set up commercial, right? You, you, you have heard of them, Namdi, Tosi, um, Steve, and they, 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 they put a an app together built for them by uh, uh, Cavidel, Deep or there, I mean, and today people can sit in their houses on their phone and buy T bills. That is how this thing starts. So, retail, Onome, would it touch you? It will. Are you suitable 
the bank will do that. FMBQ won't say an American can come and be trading. FMBQ doesn't trade. We have our own corporate treasurer. You know, I have my colleague, Kodil Goji, that runs our own small money that we invested. So we are one of those in the red where yields are very low, but that is, that, that is the way life is at the moment. So we're not conflicted. We, we play market. So retail investors, I know there'll be young Nigerians that will play in the derivatives market. And I think some banks and some people will put them together and they will. And that's, it's going to be all inclusive, but they're going to check that you are suitable. Um, we, we've heard of FX online where so many people do stuff and they lose money. Uh, it, it's not yet under our purview, but that has to be, you know, it's like, can you go to the court without having gone to law school? There are some things you have to do. So, so um, those that are in this space have done, hopefully, ACTN and ride on that and organize some seminars and short courses for people, one day programs, make money, sensitize market. Um, I won't say more than that. But no matter, yes, it will get to. I, I will just add that in my personal experience, I know that. Uh, all the financial institutions I'm aware of, they shy away for appropriateness reasons from doing derivatives with retail investors because the process of doing what, where I worked before, appropriateness and suitability, you need, there are some boxes you need to tick off internally that cover the financial institution from the legal risk that the client does not understand. And more often than not, retail clients do not pass those tick boxes. So it's not that we don't think they can do it. It's that the bank does not want the legal liability that if it goes wrong, they, they'll end up in court with a client who would claim not to have a good understanding. Uh, that's just my personal experience. Um, yeah, but, but Zil, these days, most of these young people have CFA. So if someone has CFA, should be able to do it. Uh, arguably, yes. So I'll give an example with a retail. If a retail entity has as its treasurer a very qualified person, it enhances the appropriate business and suitability index. It enhances it considerably. But it also depends on who that treasurer reports to. If that treasurer reports to a board that does not understand it, it takes you back down. Because that the treasurer did it tomorrow, the board will sack the treasurer and still tell you we didn't understand it. You're very right. And that's a good point you made. In your sensitization, you need to do something for directors. Because even if we empower the corporate treasurers and they have to face board where the chairman will say, hey, derivatives, Warren Buffett said, is a weapon of mass destruction. Don't touch it, then that's it. That's so the end I, of it, exactly. I, I hope your secretary to put that down. And we can, we can support you, organize something in a very nice place where you should take directors. I'm sorry, ah, in, Ni Patrick, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Noted. Two in blank Nigeria. checks now. In Nigeria, yeah. Well, we take directors, invite <laughs> different. All your Patrick, members invite Patrick. two for two of their directors. We look for a very different place and talk about it. It's important. Very good. Patrick, please note that two blank checks. We're drawing on that. Um, I have one question for you as well. Regard, you've mentioned systems so many times and how FMDQ is trying to get prepared with systems. Is, is FMDQ, I don't, let me say is, is there a possibility that FMDQ will insist that anybody doing derivatives on its platform must have appropriate systems to access the platforms, especially for treasury management systems? Uh, you see, if you ask me, when you're starting a new market, you talk about what is ideal to have, and you expect people to have by a certain time. Um, not everyone sees it as quickly as you see it. I agree with everything you said about system to measure your risk. So we're going to have very strong words of encouragement and during sensitization to say, don't do this without a system. But if someone then decides to do it, you submit the form. And my colleagues in exchange will probably look at it. Maybe the market will know who has you. There's a way at times you don't tell someone, don't come to a party, but when he gets there, you know, you say you need this card to have champagne. So, you know, by the time others know that the guy does not have system. So I think, I don't know what they're going to do because that's the exchange, but I'm not sure they will say it is mandatory, but I think uh, they will encourage it. Pardon me? Highly encouraged. 
it will be highly encouraged and you know counterparties can start saying <coughs> I doubt if anybody will go into these derivatives without having a system. Maybe they've not been to the lectures for market risk. I've seen the market risk reports of options and I think I saw that in Standard Charter. And you probably just want to stay with your spot and not deal with that stuff. So you can't really do it without system. So I'm not sure if MDQ really needs to say you must have system to start, but it will be highly encouraged. And over time, when the market is, you, you may start introducing that stuff to say, uh, you know, FMBQ will have review, examination of entities and stuff like that. And they will tell management, why do you want to hold a derivatives position without having a system that is throwing up as the market is changing, underlying market is changing, where your risk is today? I, I used to calculate the market risk of forwards manually. You have to check the spot. You have to check the interest rate of the unit currency. Then you check the interest rate of it. I mean, who has time for that in today's world? Then there were only three trades. Where we're going, we're going to have one million trades in like that, touch wood. Why? You, you can't do it without system. In short, no corporate treasurer should be doing anything without system. No bank treasurer will be allowed to do anything without system. So if we have not said that um, enough, I think we, we, we need to put it as part of the agenda. But I don't know what my colleagues would do, um, whether they would change their minds or whether they will insist. I'm not speaking for them. But if you ask me, as an old financial market architect, the way we developed the market, then we knew what we had to allow. But over time, people started doing things in a sophisticated manner. You know, they will have their external auditor who will say, you can't do this. Please, Patrick, put that as what ACTN should do. Get the external auditors into a room and give them sensitization on derivatives. <laughs> By the time they go to audit the member, they say you must have a system. That, then the audit point, uh, which nobody likes, no CEO likes, it goes to the boardroom and audit committee. I don't know. You will see. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking at the time. We have one last question. Uh, that's the last question. It actually came first, but I was getting some clarification. So uh, Ola Dako is asking, um, how are all the laudable capital markets transformation projects you've told us about, He's asking that um, given the fact that we usually have a drawback in doing stuff based on how we grow the foreign reserves, he's asking how realistic these projects are. I would like to add, is there anything FMDQ can do in terms of creating exchange depository, whatever, that would help grow confidence in the foreign exchange markets by either pulling funds in foreign exchange or anything like that? So basically, how can we help creates more confidence based on the fact that we have limited foreign exchange reserves and its growth is also limited. You know, Zio, um, I think you spent a lot of that one. Um, I do not know why the focus is on the foreign reserves. We, we, we just have to change that narrative. The focus should be on the liquidity of the FX market. When, when the turnover uh, in our market was almost $1 billion. Daily turnover, what was the reserves? Who remembers the figure? So there's been too much focus on reserves and that's because at times all of us think central bank has to be the seller. If central bank, if we build a first class, the most attractive FX market in Africa, central bank would not have to sell. What do you think will happen to our reserves? So. Um, the way I will address that is probably different. Um, if we keep telling the FPIs, come, these are reserves, he thinks it's going to be paid out of the reserves. I think you should look at the market and let's work out in having a very high daily turnover in that market. So when he says, I want to bring $250 million in, no, it won't even start like that. It will start from the statistics of the FX market and the bond market. And when he sees the figures printed by FMDQ, he'll say, this market does $1 billion a day, then I'll go to this market. When he was doing the one, we were doing one billion, almost $1 billion a day, what was the result? It was two-way coat. It was, the, it was the market structure that supported it. When we're going to start two-way code in 1995-96, we went to Union Bank to pitch 
and I went with Mrs. Oshibodu to pitch the idea to, to the executive director treasury. I, I told Mrs. Oshibodu we should go to the young banks, GTB, you know, IBTC, where Mrs. Oshibodu said, let's go to the big banks. That time we used to have big banks, First Bank, Union Bank, UB. When we got there, the reserves of this country was $6 billion. The executive director told Mrs. Oshibodu, don't be part of this two-way code thing. The country doesn't have enough dollars. I kept quiet. I was a rookie following Mr. Shibodu. And the man said, don't punish your reputation. Don't wreck it. When we got to the lift and we got down, uh, she said, why are you smiling? What's wrong with you? I had the mischievous smile. I said, I told you, man, the senior people cannot see what we're talking about. She said, so what do we do now? I said, can you please permit me to call the, the, my own? You know when they say my own? Let me call the 25, 26 year olds in this country, MBC, Nero Adirok, Batosin, Rushe, we, you know, all of them in the market, then Sheikh Magbaje, we, we called Sheikh Magbaje, she said, okay, try Sheikh Magbaje, can we meet in your office in GTB, I think plural house, in Over 33 people turned up and were explaining to Echo. Everybody was understanding. Then one, someone said, what if I quote these streets and they hit me, they buy? I quote the same rate, they buy. I quote, people say, what do you mean? Why are you quoting the same rate? And she said, oh, I got it now, so I can change my rate. And we went back to the office and she said, how was it? I said, ma'am, 33 people said they will start. And we started. We were young and we started. I was 25 and we started it then. And we started with one naira spread, $100,000. The country had 6 billion reserves. The country did not go down. The focus on foreign reserves, we have to take it away and build a solid market. And the more the market is solid, people can bring in dollars, take it out, take in dollars, bring it out. CBN dollars, there was a time CBN was not selling anything at his auction. You remember, Zil? Nobody was buying. A, a, a central bank had told me, Coco, we're not happy. I said, I said, nobody is coming to auction. I said, you should be happy. You build up the reserves for the country. So there are things we have to change architecture-wise. How do we sell dollars coming into the Federation? How do we do this? How do we build liquid markets? Well, we have that one slide of a most attractive FX market in Africa. Nobody's going to look at your reserves. Sure. Good. Fantastic. Thank you, Coco. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate all the questions you've taken and the insights you've given. Uh, we don't have any more questions, and I'm looking at the time. I'm not going to ask any more, uh, but we will, after this, all the members of the association, please reach out if you have other questions you want us to discuss. The Governing Council will be able to reach out to FMBQ and come back to you with answers if there's need. Thank you very much, Coco. Patrick? Thank you, Zil. Thank you very much. Um, time is fast spent. Um, at this point, uh, I would want to invite... Uh, the treasurer of CFAO and the chairman of the ACTN Governing Council Standard uh, Education Standard and Education Committee, uh, Mr. Yenka Ogunubi, to kindly give um, a vote of thanks to our guest speaker. Yenka, please. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I just want to be sure that uh, you are hearing me clearly. Yes, we are, Yinka, loud and clear. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Mr. Bola. Odili, um, I'm one of your biggest admirers. And um, I was actually there on the 12-12-12 <laughs> when we, uh, when, um, we, you know, we, we launched the ACTN. In fact, I was sitting on the same table with you for, for lunch. <laughs> Fantastic. So, and, uh, you know, I, I remember um, that day that I left uh, thinking um, this man is a visionary. And, uh, you know, in, in, in many perspectives, we've seen how you've driven uh, a lot of innovation in the financial market. We've seen how um, there's been a lot of improvement. Um, uh, going back a number of years now, you know, Nigeria has been uh, has benefited from your wealth of experience, 
and uh, from your passion and from your drive. You know, uh, today I hear you speak so much about um, about retirement and pension, and I'm wondering that where does this guy think he's going? <laughs> uh, it, 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 if I had my way, uh, we will have you here um, in this market forever because I think uh, this market uh, and Nigeria needs somebody you know like you. Uh, we're um, very happy to have you as a, as a grand patron. I know that, I know that title does not exist in ACTN, <laughs> but uh, I wasn't I wasn't aware. <laughs> <laughs> But we're very happy to have um, uh, uh, somebody like you backing on all our activities. And uh, every time we call, you're, you're always there, every single time. And I know that we are going to come back, not just to catch, uh, catch the, um, the blank checks you've given to us, but also call you uh, for advice. And when we decide to take that bold initiative, uh, the ones that we've spoken here, I'm sure you'll be there. To our sister. So, on behalf of the ACTN, on behalf of the Governing Council, and all members of the ACTN, we thank you for coming, for honoring our invitation, and we wish you well in all your endeavors. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words, Nico. On that note, um, I wish to thank everybody for your time, and um, I wish uh, you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Patrick, Patrick, you won't thank the Allah Jibade that you stressed from morning to night. She has not slept. My technical assistant, you won't thank her. Thank her so much. I will also <laughs> thank her off, offline. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, everyone.